welcome or welcome back to Second Arts, where we explore the world of furniture flipping and interior design on a budget. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever started and finished a project within 48 hours? Neither have I until now, because I took it upon myself to transform this chest of drawers and actually finish it before my ADHD takes over and I start another project. If you don't know me, my name is Agnieszka and I'm a furniture flipper based in Gothenburg, Sweden. And today I'm gonna show you how to transform and modernize wooden furniture in five easy steps. I'm gonna show you the tools I have used and explain the process so that you can do it yourself as well. I hope you are ready for this video because this flip starts right now. I stumbled upon this majestic chest of drawers in the wild jungles of Marketplace. But lo and behold, because this find is like the unicorn of second-hand furniture, it's actually in decent shape. And you know what that means? No more heartaches from the furniture police who've been giving me the stink eye for painting old treasures. It's a win-win, folks. I thought that we would have to remove the old hardware and change it up to a new one but luckily it looks kind of good it's just super super dirty and I can see that it's brass hardware underneath so of course I'm gonna keep it I'm just gonna have to polish it and uh, you know clean it up a little bit but I also will have to find a key replacement because this piece will not come with any key so I'm gonna have to find one that's gonna work with this piece. And to be honest with you, I have no idea how old this piece might be. But, I mean, it has to be at least 50 years old. At least. And it's done very good. Like, it's solid wood. So I'm super stoked about this piece, about this uh, project. As you can see, the hardware is dark grey, almost black, but it's not how it's supposed to look. But luckily, I've got a few magic tricks up my sleeve and you won't recognize this in the end. Now let me introduce you to one of my trusty sidekicks in this furniture fixing game, the carpet scraper. I discovered this tool around one year ago and it was a total game changer. Instead of using chemical stripper or sanding for hours and hours, I just used this carpet scraper, and since the varnish is quite thin, it wasn't any challenge to remove it. But what turned out to be a challenge was to flip this piece on its side to continue working. One thing you have to remember when working with carpet scraper is to go with the wood grain. Otherwise, you will ruin the beautiful wood you just exposed to the world. I just came back from a thrift store. I took a little break to go and see if I can find something to, you know, decorate my house with or if I can find some good furniture to flip. And honestly, my local thrift stores have been so bad lately. There are no furniture to flip. Everything is super expensive. I mean, I found that one, I think it's like a apothecary buffet, and it was 6,000 Swedish crown. It's more or less six hundred dollars the glass was missing the hardware was missing and they still wanted six thousand for that it's crazy out here if you go to thrift stores are your prices just as crazy as here because there's literally nothing to be found and once you find something that's pretty much okay it's extremely expensive why is happening but I digress. My 48 hour challenge continues and I'm gonna use 120 grit paper to sand this entire uh, buffer or chest and uh, I'm gonna see if I have to sand it with 320 grit paper or not. 
120 grit paper is perfect to sand the rest of the varnish and smooth out the surface. And once again, I'm going with the wood grain. But sometimes the surface isn't just smooth enough and that's when I use 320 grit paper to get that perfectly smooth finish. Since Orbital Sander doesn't fit in the tight corners, I'm using Palm Sander or Finger Sander. This small tool costs only $10 but is super effective and helps to reach those tight spots and corners. It took me maybe four or five hours to sand and scrape this piece and honestly I wish all of my projects went this fast because I'm almost done. Now all I have to do left is to clean it and tomorrow I'm gonna come back and I'm not gonna tell you what I'm gonna do tomorrow. You're gonna have to wait and see. Before I close my workshop for the day I cleansed this chest with hot water. Doing that you can also see what this piece would look like if I would apply varnish without applying stain or paint wash first. Here is everything you need to make a paint wash. Let me show you. First of all, you need some kind of container. I have this one with some leftover paint wash in here. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, I'm gonna create my own mixture if I can open this. Here I have some leftover Fusion Mina paint from uh, called Azum King. If you want a natural looking paint wash, just to tone down the wood. This paint, Fujimina paint, Algon paint, is the perfect color for that. Because it's kind of brownish with beige and gray undertones, so it gives the most natural looking paint wash. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of Cathedral Papier to be. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I will be honest with you, one thing I don't like about this um, container is it's extremely hard to open if you don't clean it good enough before closing it. So I'm gonna just add like so. Next I'm gonna add some water. This is just plain water. One thing I have learned is it's better to have a very watery mixture. If you have a watery mixture, you can work your way up with it and maybe apply three or four coats instead of one coat and not liking it. I applied the paint wash with a soft brush and once again, I went with the wood grain. Next, I wiped it off with a regular paper towel. Once the first layer of paint wash had dried, I didn't really like the results. The wood was way too grey in my opinion, so I took a quick trip to my local hardware store to find a solution to my problem. Once there, I tried to decide on the stain I wanted to use for my dresser. Have you guessed which stain I chose in the end? Well, I went with water-based stain in color dark oak. But instead of removing the paint wash I have applied earlier, I remembered a technique I once saw on Instagram where someone applied the stain after the paint wash. And as it turns out, this might be my new favorite technique because it gave me such a beautiful color. And the best part is you can work your way up and decide how dark you want the wood to be by applying several coats of stain. Thank you. 
Once the dresser had dried, it was time to seal it all up. For that I used oil-based polycrylic and a small roller. I have used both water-based and oil-based varnish before and in my opinion oil-based varnish is best to protect wooden furniture while water-based is a better fit for painted furniture. Last but not least, even the hardware got a slight makeover. Once I cleaned it, the hardware turned out to be rose gold, which would not work with this dresser. To prep the hardware, I used a metal primer, that way the paint won't scratch easily. And next I went with a golden spray color to make it look as much as brass as possible. And these were the five steps I took to transform this chest to a modern piece of furniture. The best part is I did actually manage to finish this project within 48 hours, which doesn't happen too often for me. And thanks to this new technique where I combined paint wash with dark stain, this chest got a modern look keeping its vintage quality. As you can see, not all furniture requires painting in order to get a whole new look, even though I did use some paint to transform this piece. But I would love to hear from you in the comments, how did you like this transformation and what would you do in my place? Let me know in the comments and I will see you next time.